first of all, VPS fuel management uh, platform. What's it about? What's it here for? It, basically, we uh, were receiving we receive lots of claims uh, across the PNI Club on fuel quality issues. So we then decided to develop a platform to try and display some of these problems to our members and give them free access to a platform called VPS uh, data and we call it Fuel Insights. And the idea being is that you have access to all the fuel off spec data on a global basis. We'll, we're gonna go through the presentation. I'm gonna give you a bit of a background of myself. My name is Mark Smith, uh, an ex-engineer, technical and fleet superintendent with container vessels, bulk carriers and multi-purpose vessels. And um, my background in all standard has been dealing with loss prevention um, survey fuel related inquiries and also decarbonization as you can see by my title i'm going to allow john to just to quickly introduce himself before we carry on with the rest of the presentation and then we can take it from there thank you john hi everyone thanks mark my name is john ostuk uh, i'm responsible for operations for digital and decarb which includes our portfolio of applications that we uh, offer to the maritime sector uh, port sets being one of them uh, happy to be here today and to present the uh, North Standard Fuel Insights platform to you. My background is in strategy and business development. And uh, before VPS, I've been working in the shipbuilding industry for over nine years. So happy to be here. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, John. Great introduction. And please feel free to contact John or myself or other members of the team should you have any questions either now or later on as we go throughout the, the platform itself. So let's first of all look at the background. What's the background behind this? The background is this is part of the Get Set Go program. That's something that we're rolling out across North Standard. And basically it's the use of data to drive operational efficiency. We, we recognize the falling cost of satellite com costs across the industry, and that then brings the ship to shore gap closer together. All ships and seafarers will be connected at all times, and we need to provide an opportunity to bring the ship and shore closer together. When I look back at my time as a technical superintendent, it was always one of the big barriers we were trying to, to knock down and, and gain familiarity between the ship and the shore. And this is the suite of programs we're helping our members to do so with. So even simple things like a visual teams meeting can support teamwork and improve ship to shore relations. And these are some of the other products which can be used to help and guide your employees throughout the company and throughout the next stages. So what we're doing, as we said there, is we're looking to close the gap between ship and shore. And we're using technology to do this. So let's have a quick canter through what products we've got as part of the Get Set program. More can be seen on our website in any of these, and we're happy to help you with a deeper and more, uh, more impactful uh, description of each of these products separate to this. But we're just gonna give you a quick overview. So as part of the Get Set program, we've got GlobeView, which is a geospatial platform, and it allows you to look globally around the world, obviously, at different ports and the risks there, the threat assessment, sanctions advice, and various other information relevant to your port call. That has just been modified to a new version with an intuitive platform looking at a global basis of all the problems you may experience. So we'd recommend that you get signed up for this and you have a look with it. And, you know, especially if you're trading to certain ports, it will help you to look ahead. The next thing we're briefly going to discuss is ECTIS TA, ECTIS ETA. And this is designed to support crew members, individual and collective ECTIS knowledge and skills with comprehensive, relevant and tailored training that goes beyond the mandatory and generic requirements. The next platform we're going to refer to is Orca AI because we're going to talk about the VPS platform at length throughout this presentation. The Orca AI platform acts as a fully automated watchkeeper, ensuring vessels can safely navigate through challenging weather conditions and vessel congestion with limited visibility. In addition, Orca AI provides those on shore with unprecedented visibility into fleet operations, allowing ship owners and operation leaders to identify safety gaps and trends that require action. 
And there is some schools of thought that this will reduce close quarter um, situations and possibly prevent certain collisions uh, by giving an advance warning. It's not to replace a watchkeeper. That's never the purpose of the program and the system. It's there to assist. And then we've got ship in as well, which uses camera technology blended with AI to continuously analyze shipboard operation, identifying risks, enabling direct and indirect accurate actions that lead to less incidents on board. And we've had some feedback from crew positively on this, showing you know what they think is worthwhile and that they feel that they're a little bit more safer should they have an accident and that is spotted quickly. So that brings us really to the end of this part of the slide what i'm going to do now is i'm going to stop sharing this particular slide here and then i'm going to quickly put up onto the screen a video that you can all watch on fuel insights after which we're going to give a demo of the platform and we're going to canter through and answer some of your questions so hopefully this video should work and you should all be able to hear the sound Sorry. Something. Recognizing the need to manage risk and reduce claims related to fuel problems, one of the most challenging areas of ship management. We've partnered with VPS, a leader in marine fuel testing services, to launch Fuel Insights the latest resource in our Get Set Safety and Efficiency Technology Portfolio. Fuel Insights supports users to better anticipate risks associated with fuel quality, easily access actionable insights based on live VPS data, including fuel off specs, supplier information, and density differences in all major bunkering ports, supporting users to anticipate risks and select the most suitable fuels at the right price. With the lowest environmental footprint for fully informed fuel procurement decisions based on calorific value. Fuel Insights helps users proactively manage risks and reduce claims by identifying potential fuel quality issues before they impact operations. It is the ultimate destination for real-time fuel quality statistics presented in an interactive and user-friendly dashboard. Fuel Insights helps protect our members' assets, people and the planet. Fuel Insights is free for North Standard members and can be accessed through a North Standard account. Okay, great. That was uh, the video when it eventually came on. A little bit of a delay there, but we got there in the end. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to share the actual platform itself. And just something I just want to say to you as we share this screen, and John and I are going to talk about the platform itself and do a little bit of a demo on it. One of the first things I just want to say to you is that when you log into this platform, you know, you, my North and previously my standard users will be migrated across, but sometimes you will need to change your password. That generally seems to be the most sex successful tool at getting this platform working successfully. Um, but every time when you log in, you can see on the North Standard website that Fuel Insights is clearly labeled, and so is GlobeView, which is the other platform, the geospatial platform we referred to earlier. Always log in just to make sure you're logged in on this particular point and then you know, you'll be able to tell obviously by the logout button that you're logged in. We have quite a few users who, who seem to be struggling with the login process but this is the way it works. And then basically you scroll down to the Fuel Insights and you click on that and you allow the platform to upload. 
So the platform's now just initialising, and um, sometimes it doesn't take too long, and hopefully you will see it coming in as it has done now. So I'm quickly going to go through some of these sheets. Um, John, feel, feel, please feel free to jump in uh, with the platform. Um, basically, just to give you a bit of background, the data is coming in via ClickSense. John can provide more information on that. But then we've embedded this platform into our North Standard website. The reason being is that we needed a single sign-on. We listened to our members and we listened to feedback across our members and they were struggling with some of the platforms when they had to sign in differently across every platform. So we listened to that and then we, we uh, initiated a single sign-on process which can be used for not only Fuel Insights but other sections of the North Standard website. So when we first go on, we can look at the dashboard first here. And the dashboard gives us various information on, on different ports around the world. And you can look at fuel supply overview and quantities on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, you can see the bunker quantity versus percentage off spec in each individual port. And as you can see here, by cl quickly clicking on a port like that, it'll automatically filter on this port. And then you can see, for example, the amount of fuel shells supplied, you know, and we've got a breakdown of ultra low sulfur fuel oil, very low sulfur fuel oil, high sulfur fuel oil, MGO and biofuels. And whenever you click on any of these platforms, you'll see up here the name appearing. You can quickly click that to uh, exit again, and then you can go in to create another filter. It's quite an intuitive platform. You can also, as we'll go out throughout the rest of this, you can look at the port name. There's a selection of hundreds of ports around the world. You can obviously filter on the country, the main port, the supplier, which is important information should you be wishing to, you know, look at the quality of the fuels and some of the off-spec parameters which are identified with different suppliers. And then you can look at that accordingly. And, and then you can even go down to barge level data, which took John a lot of persuasion. It took a couple of months to persuade John and VPS to allow us to use that data. But I, I think we find it's very handy. And in fact, recently, John, I think we could probably talk about a case where one of our members had some poor quality fuel. They then contacted the supplier. The supplier then came back and fed back that, you know, we don't have any poor quality fuel. They were actually able to focus in on this platform, focus on the barge that supplied their fuel, and they realized that there was three other off-spec fuels with exactly the same high levels of cat fine, over 100 ppm, provided by the same barge. That then enabled our members to basically uh, debunker the fuel successfully. So the members fed back to us um, and they were very pleased with the use of this platform. So that, that's just something that's been used to provide some feedback on that and where you can possibly use it. I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that, Mark. Uh, uh, you know, when we uh, when we launched Port Stats uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was 2021. Uh, the goal was was ultimately to bring more transparency to the to the industry about these fuel quality issues happening in the market. So it's uh, yeah, it's very pleasing to see that uh, the data is being used in such a proactive way, and hopefully that will lead to less downtime and less quality issues uh, affecting the fleet. Great, thanks. Just while you're on, John, is there anything else do you want to add to this particular sheet or should we just move on to the next one? So, so I think uh, uh, what's maybe important to, to mention and that goes for all the sheets. So uh, the way you navigate through this is that uh, you have a little drop down menu at the top that Mark clicked on earlier that will allow you to navigate to the different sheets. But uh, in every sheet, yeah, as you can see here and in every sheet, you will have a selection pane uh, at the top. Uh, top of the screen that allows you to manipulate the data that you're looking at. So if you want to limit your data to look at a specific fuel type or grade or period of time, you're allowed to do so using the filter pane. So um, these filters persist throughout the different sheets. So always remember which filters you have selected um, uh, while navigating through the different sheets. And a lot of the uh, visualizations, a lot of the charts that you will see today, they are interactive. So as, uh, as Mark showed earlier, he was able to drill down from uh, a global level to a port level to a supplier level within that port. Um, that's something that uh, is sort of a philosophy uh, in the way we do that data analytics, uh, also how Click uh, works. So you will see that throughout throughout the presentation today. That's about it, uh, Mark. Thanks, John. 
And something that I do find quite handy as I use this, that if you put the filters on, on one of the navigation sheets, that when you go to the next one, the filters stay there. So if you're filtering on, for example, Antwerp and North Star bunkers, that will carry on when you go onto your next sheet. So it is quite intuitive in that sense and can be quite handy to use. Fuel quality monitor. So this is looking at off spec around the world and we're focusing on Antwerp here and you can see the levels of, you know, percentage off spec on different suppliers. There is a modification as it was well spotted by my colleague um, Rod that sometimes the data isn't coming across here into the red part of the chart. But you can see on this left hand side here, the actual percentage that's represented. This is something that the VPS team is going to work on over the next week. I believe John just to uh, just, yeah. just in case anybody's confused by any of this. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward how this part works. You know, we're looking at Antwerp there. We can see the fuel supplied. We can see the quantities supplied and we can see the breakdown of off spec. So their poor point is the biggest problem at the moment in Antwerp. But then if we wanted to look, for example, at Houston and see what's happening in Houston at the minute, we can very quick on Houston and we can very quickly see that aluminium silicon um, cat finds is a, is a larger problem in Houston. And similarly, we can look at any port in the world and look at what's going on there. And we'll show you later on how to look in more detail at this as well but it gives an indication. So we can see that in Singapore, poor point is a big problem at the moment. And we can see the biggest supplier in Singapore at the moment tends to be Shell. And they haven't had too many off specs recently, according to the data provided in this particular table. Yeah, so if I may add here, Mark, uh, I think important to mention here is that we don't only show off specs here. So uh, we also so show, and those are the amber bars, and you'll see it in the bottom table as well, the the rows uh, uh, that have uh, amber conditional formatting. We also show cautions from VPS. So um, these cases are not claims. They're not uh, ISO 8217 aspects. They are just elevated parameter levels that could lead to an issue. So for example, having uh, cat finds around 50 uh, ppm, uh, it's not an off-spec if it's an RMG fuel, but it can lead to issues if that happens on a repeated basis. Similarly here, we see from uh, TFG, we see an MGO sample with uh, fairly low sulfur. doesn't have to be an issue, but it could lead to lubricity uh, concerns. So um, we flag here, not just off-specs, but also caution. So be aware of that. Uh, second point, I would always recommend filtering on a fuel type first so that you can get the off-spec rate uh, yeah, a little bit to your right, yeah. Like for example, VLSFO, um, and then you will get the off-spec rates for that specific, uh, yeah, there you go. So um, yeah, that that's just two tips here. Yeah, I, I often find that when I look into this, we look, I mean, most of our members are using VLSFO at the moment. As we'll see this change throughout the, the course of the next few years, we'll see biofuels becoming a lot more prominent but we can even see and this is an agreement we have with vps that you know biofuels are included and as other fuels start coming to the forefront we will uh, we will have alternative fuels displayed as well but you can see here that quite clearly by the graphs that barcelona appears to be the front runner in the supply of biofuels at the minute with um netherlands and singapore fo following closely behind at, at least in the VPS. supply of cautions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, uh, right now we have one category for biofuels. Um, as uh, the 2024 ISO standard has been uh, implemented, we are now moving on to having those grades in the system as well. That will take some time as we need to receive uh, samples tested according to the 2024 scope. But you will see start seeing more and more of these uh, RF grades coming into the system. Um, and perhaps other alternative fuel types as well. So uh, as part of the deal, the agreement, the partnership with North Standard, uh, they get access to all uh, new fuel uh, types as well. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Okay, the next one we're going to go on to, and we, we've left it via fuels, but let's go back to VLSFO now. So we're going to look at, and this is quite simply an overview this one actually has the the table separated so you've got high sulfur fuel and very low sulfur fuel oil and then we can see here yeah again the off spec parameter so when we're looking at very low sulfur fuel oil sulfur seems to be the bigger one but if we're looking for example at houston let's see if houston is still 
So we're just looking at Houston now. Oh, sorry, I must have uh, typed that in incorrectly. So we can see Houston is still suffering from off-spec sulfur, but also cat finds are creeping up there as well, followed by pore point. So that one there, you don't need to filter so much, do you really? Because it gives you the high, low, high sulfur fuel oil and the very low sulfur fuel oil. Yeah, maybe, yeah it, maybe, maybe I would filter on time just to make sure that you're looking at the most recent data. I yeah, would maybe yeah. in the bunker year month or the bunker year week, well, either one of them, I would maybe select the last couple months. Uh, yeah. And then uh, you will see that there's a, a lot less aspects. So that's good news. But you can always see the details of each aspects in the tables below. So uh, you can see them in a graphical overview at the top. And then here you can see the actual aspects below, why they were aspect, on which parameters, and by how much. So I think that's always uh, handy. And then, yeah, again, you can always filter by the barge as we spoke about before. So. If you use a barge that you used and it was problematic, you can simply filter on that barge and see what other fuels were supplied by that particular supplier at the same time and, and you know, use any of the other filters. So this, this table at the bottom is also interactive and allows you to click so that you can see extra information. The next one we're looking at is very similar, but it basically looks at MGO and ultra low sulfur fuel oils. Obviously, we tend to see less problems with MGO, but it's going to be used a lot more over this next period in some cases. So, you know, it's still worth keeping an eye on that. But so that information is there for you to see. This is something that's quite new to us. Uh, historically, we just used to provide very low sulfur fuel oil, but now we've expanded that to uncover to cover distillates and biofuels as well. So we've extended the range of uh, parameters recorded effectively. The next thing I'm going to go on to, I'm going to go on to very low sulfur fuel oil and I'm going to go on to the port of Houston. Would you agree with that, John? Yeah, that sounds uh, like a, uh, that's country. So that's yeah, sorry, the United yeah, States. Point, yeah. No, no problem. <laughs> Houston you can there, just click yeah, it. So, uh, it's yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe I'm, I can give a, sh a short intro on what do, this. Yeah, please do. So this was actually co-developed with uh, one of our customers, a large cruise company, and they were looking for uh, a way to um, when they go bunker in a certain port, to have a very quick overview of, okay, what are the quality concerns in this port by supplier? So we came up with this quality scorecard feature. The methodology is, is quite complicated, but I'll try to explain. Basically, we assign a weight uh, to different uh, quality parameters, as well as availability uh, and the, the general aspect rate and the energy content, so the calorific value. We assign weights on that on those, and based on those weights, we come up with an index score for the different suppliers in the port. Um, we have a minimum number of samples that we uh, require for the analysis, otherwise it wouldn't make much statistical sense. But the idea is here that you can see in one overview, okay, uh, what are the, uh, the quality concerns uh, in this port? So, um, if you look at Houston, for example, for VLSFO, you can see that cat finds for almost all suppliers, except uh, Monjasa in this case, uh, they get zero points, which means that they had most most cases uh, above 40 cat finds. Uh, not necessarily off spec, but for, from our point of view, it, it can lead to uh, quality considerations. Another interesting area here is the chemical contaminants. So uh, we, we uh, on roughly 10% of our samples that we test, we uh, do a GCMS screening, um, which you can see in the, the one before last column uh, on the right side of the screen. And here you can see that only uh, in this case, Newstar got full points and got the full five points. So that means 0% uh, chemical contaminants found, whereas all the others uh, had, z had zero points, which means that there were several cases uh, that uh, chemical contaminants were found. So uh, in this case, energy is similar for all suppliers, so that you could probably uh, ignore if you have to go to this port anyway. But you can now see, okay, cat finds and, 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 and chemical contaminants, those are my main issues here, uh, and you can, can steer on that. You can also see that the top three suppliers don't have any uh, technical aspects, so uh, nothing was aspect that we've tested so far. Um, so the reds that you see here are just additional quality guidelines um, because, uh, yeah, chemical contaminants, uh, I guess it's a bit of a gray area, but uh, as long as it's uh, um, 
yeah, not leading to any issues, then it's sort of <laughs> okay. But uh, from VPS's point of view, of course, uh, these uh, chemicals should not be in the fuel. Okay, thank you, John. That's excellent. I, I mean, something I just want to really bring across from a P&I club's perspective. You know, we stand up at these seminars quite a bit, and you hear people saying, you know, we haven't had any problems since 2020, since, uh, you know, and, and I, I don't agree with that. From a P&I club, obviously, we only get the bad news. People only come to us and tell us when there's a problem, when they've got a problem with the fuel. We, we don't get an email to say, oh, we had some lovely fuel last week. We only get to hear about the bad news. But we've definitely heard of a lot of problems since 2020, and GCMS testing has very much came to the forefront and what we see as a club is that sometimes fuel is bunkered on board a vessel and the the fuel is then either not managed correctly on board the vessel or the fuel was unstable before it arrived on board the vessel and actually finding out what caused that can be quite an expensive process because you need experts on both sides on the charters and on the owner side and you need to prove exactly what caused the fuel so what we're providing you here is information. We're not trying to say to you by any stretch, don't carry out GCMS testing. But, and I'm hoping you agree with me here, John, if you see that there's a GCMS caution rate on a port where you're going to bunker fuel, I, I as a technical somebody then would most definitely be interested in carrying out GCMS testing in that port, or I may be tempted to, to look out of the fuels, let's say, you know. So it's just a pre-warning. It's not there to replace any, any sort of testing at all. But, you know, if I did see red on this, on the GCMS caution, then it would definitely indicate to me that I need to do further investigation before I bunker that fuel. And we'll talk about that later on from a, a wax appearance and wax disappearance te temperature perspective as well as we go throughout the, the few slides later on. Thank Great you, point, John. Mark. I think, uh, yeah, uh, please note that this only looks at data from the last 30 days. So it is very actual what you're seeing right now. Uh, this picture changes by port uh, uh, almost weekly. So uh, you are always getting a refresh of the l latest situation. Excellent. Thank you, John. Yeah. So let's look at the fingerprint parameters now so we can see density, viscosity, and then the sulfur content as well. And you can, yet again, you can dig down further into each of those using the filters as we've showed you early on throughout this presentation. The next thing is cat finds and stability. Obviously, this is quite an important point and, you know, Obviously, the cat finds, we're starting to see cat finds. I'm hoping you agree here, John, but I've definitely seen a lot more recent cat find claims than I had between 2020 and 2023. They've definitely started coming back into the equation a lot more now. And obviously, we all know what cat finds can do. The damage it can cause to fuel pumps, liners, engines, lead to major breakdowns, major delays to cargo, etc., etc. So we really need to try and keep an eye on this as we go through the next stage. But is that correct? Have you seen a trend in cat Famous lately, John, across the board. Well, well, we we also test loop oils, right? So we see a lot more cases where we test the loop oil, and there are, uh, let's say, uh, wear met like uh, iron deposits, uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, one of the potential causes of that is, of course, when uh, cat finds don't get separated properly, uh, and that they end up embedded in the in the in the liner. liner. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, we we are seeing more of that. Uh, specifically, I think since the advent of VLSFOs in general, there has been a trend of, of higher cat fines. Uh, I want to say that 2023, it was a little bit uh, more stable. Um, and now with uh, new blends coming into the market, it's a, it's a bit uh, of a guessing game of what kind of quality you will get. Um, and and the, with the biofuel blends, you also see that the quality is not always properly documented in the BDN. So that's also another area where I see that uh, there's uh, room to improve. Um, but yeah, uh, funnily enough, this year we've seen an uptake in HSFO. So it seems that more companies are, are using scrubbers than before. That's something I've seen. Uh, and of course, with, with heavier fuel, you also have... Uh, um, higher density, higher viscosity, and sometimes higher cap fines as well. Yeah, okay. And it's important to just point out that, John, as well, that we see quite regularly ship owners which uh, bunker fuels which are below the ISO limits on cat fines, you know, below the 60 or 80 um, mg per kg, but they still end up having problems, and that generally yeah. is to do yeah. with the purifier operation. Yeah. 
So one of the things we always recommend to rem members to do on a regular basis and not just wait for high cat fine fuels, but is to take fuel samples before and after your purifier. And that then allows you to look at the effectiveness of your purifier. Should you bunker a higher cat fine fuel in the future, you need to get it down to 15 mg per kg before it goes into the main engine. And the only chance of doing that is by having good purification plants on board. So I'm not just trying to promote additional testing for John here. What I am saying is that make sure your uh, purifiers are operating correctly. And you, to do that, you may need to take samples before and after the purifiers. Thank you, though. That's, that's excellent for that part. And then we shall go on to the next part. There's not much more. So cold flow properties. You know, historically, as we look back prior to 2020, we always used to carry fuel at 10 degrees C above the pore point. With the advent of uh, distillate-based fuels and, and fuels used for very low sulfur fuel oil, we then, uh, VPS actually introduces a test program called wax appearance testing and wax disappearance temperature testing. And that's basically the temperature below which the fuel will be a solid wax effectively. So you, you need to heat it up above that temperature. At, just after 2020, we've seen a lot of fuels with a wax appearance temperature up in the 40s and 50s, yet the flash point was you know, not far off that as well. So you've also got concerns from a flash point perspective that you need to heat the fuel up to a certain level, but then you're getting towards a dangerous level also as well when you heat the fuel up you're then causing you can cause damage to the fuel which leads to instability so that's something else which needs to be considered so yet again not to replace any testing that you would do as, as a ship owner or a member but or a charter for that matter but any anything you can see in advance to warn you about the wax appearance temperature or wax disappearance temperature for a particular port you're looking at is going to help you to plan in advance what you need to do and you know would you agree with me if you, as you start seeing the wax appearance temperatures being higher john then it may be worthwhile carrying out some sort of test on that yeah, so this is an excellent point and something that led to a lot of issues for our clients, uh, definitely in Q2, Q3 of, uh, of 2020 and, and beyond that. So um, the tricky part is, of course, as you mentioned, when you have a, a low flash point and a high wax appearance temperature, but combined with high cat fines and low viscosity, that becomes a sort of uh, perfect storm, right? Because you cannot uh, keep heating it because the viscosity is already too low. Uh, so you get like some kind of vapor lock uh, kind of situation. And due to the cap fines, it's also really hard to treat the fuel. Um, so we've had cases where we, the customers just had to had to debunker in the end. Um, yeah, waxing has been quite a common issue that we've seen uh, with, with VLSFO specifically. Um, but also with some more exotic um, uh, bio biofuel types, like uh, we've had issues uh, with cashew nut shell liquids, where uh, there was also some kind of sludge appearing, um, and there are other uh, uh, cases like that as well uh, in the VPS troubleshooting database. We also have a, a question uh, from the audience. Would you like to take that now? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's from uh, Darmesh. Uh, he says, we often face issues of chemical contamination. Uh, what we do not get is the effect of the chemicals. We need to rely on the experience factor, but that is a chance to be taken. Uh, they have burnt their fingers with a major breakdown of the main engine, plunger barrels, injection valves. So uh, can VPS alert strongly on the fuel, which should not be used, or some alert that this fuel contains? Okay, so... Um, Good question. Um, so we have uh, multiple types of GCMS services. The screening basically looks for a collection of the of compounds uh, in a certain con concentration and will generate a caution when any of these compounds are found in a significant concentration. Then we have the uh, more advanced GCMS analyses like uh, 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 acid extraction and vacuum distillation and a full investigation which is where we go into the, 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 the actual concentration, actual com compounds found, and we will give some technical advice on, uh, on what the consequences would be and how to treat it. Um, right now, we're not doing that on a, let's say, statistic level, on a data level, because we've, we found that not every chemical compound in the same concentration leads to the same issues for every ship. It depends on the engine configuration and many other aspects uh, of, of how the vessel is, is uh, configured. So it always requires a, a technical advisor to look together with the, with the customer to see what's going on. Um, 
what we have started doing internally is we have an app called the issue log app where uh, basically our sales team is uh, logging cases where customers has had these kind of issues. And what we're trying to do with AI, this is still uh, very experimental, but just to be very transparent to you, we're trying to use uh, AI to correlate basically our GCMS database of compounds that we found in certain concentrations with all of the issues that we've logged from our customers. Right now we have about uh, several hundred cases and that needs to go up into the thousands before we can do any meaningful analysis. But we have started this journey already uh, uh, some time ago. So hopefully that will allow us to proactively say, hey, we, we found this chemical, it will likely lead to this type of problem. Uh, that's that's what, what my team is working on. But it is a bit of an experimental project uh, to see if we can do that. Um, I hope that answers the question. If if not, please feel free to uh, to follow up. Okay, thank you, John. That's excellent. Um, and one point I just want to just go back to based on our recent conversations there is TSP, total sediment potential. Now, we all realize across the industry that it's not the perfect test. But if you're bunkering fuel that is close to the limit of 0.10%, you know, if it's 0 0.08 or 0 0.09, then bear in, fine, bear in mind that a lot of these modern fuels have a shorter shelf life. In fact, when we're looking at biofuels, we're almost at the stage of recommending a best before date. But it's just something worth bearing in mind that if, you, if your TSP is bordering on the limits of 0.10%, then less than a few weeks' time, you may face problems with unstable fuel, which leads to blockages of the purifiers and filters, increased man hours, and the potential for debunkering and potentially expensive disputes between charters and owners. So it's just something else worth keeping an eye on um, from that perspective as well. And then something we, we thought was very important to add to this, and, and hopefully I'm going to persuade John to sort of lengthen this stage of the examination, where we're looking at the actual tested calorific value of fuel. So on the click analysis database where the data comes in, you're actually able to um, enter the, the price of the fuel you're bunkering and the cal obviously the tested calorific value, and that will then give you a reading on you know how much how much use that fuel is going to give you and, and exactly, you know, how much use it's going to be to you and what sort of problems, you know, what sort of uh, energy content you're going to get from that fuel. So that's something that we'd we'd like to add at a later stage. If it's something you'd like to see as a member, then please reach out to us and let us know. As we say, you know, we can only really, you know, look to add these things when we're getting feedback to point us towards it, because really we want this to be the ultimate tool for members to use based on feedback and improvements that you suggest as members, because you really, you're our eyes and ears here, and you're the ones who can give us the information we need if I, if I may add here mark so um, as, as part of the partnership between VPS and North standard we will continue to develop this platform I think that's also what mark is alluding to so if you have any feedback uh, on any of the sheets or any other content that you would like to see please let us know and we will we will prioritize that um, also the feature that that mark was uh, was talking about this is in is in our main we have a main port stats flagship application that VPS sells to its customers. Those of you who are familiar with it, maybe some of you are in the audience are users. Uh, we have a supplier benchmarking feature there <clears throat> where you can benchmark suppliers on on not just price, but also the calorific value and the aspects so that you get a more holistic view of, okay, which supplier offers me the best value. And it translates the, the calorific value difference uh, based on how, how many metric tons of fuel you're bunkering and the price into a, a cost saving as well. Uh, in the future, we will also be adding um, uh, carbon footprint and uh, uh, CO2 tax uh, into that. And I can imagine that that's something that you might like to see here as well. So let us know and uh, we'll work on it. Back to you, Mark. Great. Thanks, John. Excellent cooperation again. Thank you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so then, then we move on to the last sheet, really, but last, not, but not my any stretch least. And we're looking at the water content here, sodium content, obviously, uh, some concerns when it's, you know, tested in some fuels. And then vanadium, which, to be honest, used to be a big problem with the high sulfur fuel oils. I've seen it less with very low sulfur fuel oils, but when I used to be a superintendent, there was constantly exhaust valves, you know, um, struggling with vanadium content and, and et cetera, et cetera. But it seems to be less of a problem lately, if, I'm, if I remember rightly, John. Yeah, if you uh, maybe select HSFO, you might see a difference. Yeah, exactly. Some VLSFO so, yeah. still. 
Let's yeah. let's have a look. Let's see what we just out of curiosity see what it is of what. Yeah. I think yeah, it will be. It's something that's yeah. So you can see the vanadium levels yeah. rise quite sharply as yeah. soon as you filter on high sulfur fuel oils. Yeah. So yeah, it tends to be a problem with high sulfur fuel oils, but that's not to say our audience isn't using high sulfur fuel oil. So, um, and then we've got the acid number as well, which is there for for information. So I think really that's quite a quick canter through the whole the whole uh, you know fuel insights itself. Is there anything else you want to add before I, I pitch to the the virtual room for questions, John? No, I think uh, you became quite proficient with it. Uh, <laughs> you did, you did a better job than I ever could. So uh, no, good job. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to stop sharing my screen now. I'm going to basically ask if anybody's got any questions. I'll keep the screen sharing just in case they want a demonstration or if they've got anything else to ask. We understand this might be quite new to you all. I mean, so by all means, contact any of us for a demonstration. We're more than happy to give us a demonstration. As we said before, we want to try and lessen the claims we're seeing from fuel um, fuel quality problems across across our membership. So we're really happy to give demonstration to yourselves, to your bunker procurement team, to technical, to operations, to anybody that's going to make use of this platform. And we really, we really are proud of this platform that we've launched. But if any of you have any questions now, then please feel free to ask. I appreciate it's getting late in the day for those of you in the Asia Pack reason, but uh, please feel free to give us a shout now or later if that time suits better. So I'm just going to leave it for questions for one minute. And then if you get any questions that time, great. If not, then we will look to receiving questions at a later stage. Thank you. I think I think hopefully that means we've asked answered all the questions, John. I can't see any more coming in. Doesn't yeah, let's give him some time. Uh, I think uh, I, I think there's a new yeah, question. There we in go. Here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So how live? I'll, I'll let you. How live are the results? Usually there's a day from time of bunker until you last. John, I think you're best place to answer that particular question, please. Thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, usually there's a day from time of bunker. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a, a very good question. Um, we have internal KPIs for this as well. So uh, from the major, uh, let's say, bunkering hubs, Singapore, uh, Houston, Fujairah, Rotterdam, Antwerp, uh, uh, we we strive to have each sample reported within uh, max 48 hours. Uh, and and uh, the, the data that you see in the system is updated every 24 hours. So. Um, mm. Basically, yesterday's reported samples are in the system today. Um, of course, there are exceptions to that. Uh, certain areas where we have uh, a bad connection, or um, sometimes there's delays uh, at the at the agent side and the port side. Uh, so you will see samples that have a much later uh, uh, report date than the original bunkering date. We do keep both dates in in the system so that you can actually see that. Uh, and you can judge it for yourself. But for the majority of samples coming from the larger bunkering hubs, uh, it can be anywhere between 24 and 48 hours. Great, thank you, John, thanks. And I can't see any other questions in the chat, um, but like we say, please feel free to reach out to us you know john myself any anybody else in the loss prevention team are at north standard who you're familiar with they can always point you in the right direction because we appreciate that sometimes you know you may have your contacts that you speak to on a daily basis so we're happy for the inquiry to come in any shape or form just if you've got a question please feel free to ask and we're more than happy to help so we got so one with... more question uh mark okay um, yeah, uh, good question there uh are all VPS customers automatically contributing their results or are you requesting customers confirmation? So far, no one has opted out. They, they, they could if they wanted to. Um, of course, we anonymize the data. Huh? So we don't show the receiving vessel or, or the owner of that vessel uh, in, in any of our data services. So we do anonymize the data and we focus on the data generated by our, our labs, basically what we consider our IP. Um, there have been discussions on that, but so far we've always been able to resolve them uh, in, in an amical way with our clients, um, and no one has opted out. I hope that answers uh, Katharina's uh, question. Thank you, John. Thank you. 
Okay, I think there's another one coming to the chat. Or is it just feedback? Oh, that's good. Nice to see some good feedback anyway. So we've obviously hopefully engaged the audience. Okay, well, we know it's getting very late for everybody. No more questions flooding at the moment. Thank you very much to everybody for your time. You know, we know it's either a very early start for some of you or a late afternoon for some of you in the Asia Pac region. Um, thanks to John for giving such an excellent uh, coverage on the VPS platform and everything that's behind it. Please feel free to contact us if you've got any more questions. And thank you very much once again and enjoy the rest of your day. The presentation, for, yeah. sorry, just one more thing. I'll, I'll let you speak off it before we go. One more thing is we're going to be, anybody who's registered for this webinar will automatically be sent a follow-up package, which includes the slides and the recording and uh, and various other information within that. That normally takes about a week to produce, but we'll get that out to you. So thank you very much. Thanks and over to you, John. Uh, th thanks, Mark, for uh, for giving me the honor of uh, joining this webinar and uh, yeah, a great uh, turn up. I think we had a really good audience and uh, yeah, really looking forward to interacting with you, hearing your feedback about how we can improve the platform and hopefully that uh, you can use it to prevent any downtime to your fleet and optimize for operational efficiency. So get set and uh, thank you very much and I hope you have a great week ahead. Okay, yeah, that's, I can see the Get Set logo stuck in your head there, John. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, everybody. Thanks. Have a good day. Cheers. Take care. Thank you. Bye.